Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Race. Coming to you from Atlanta. And it does, doesn't it look like Atlanta? Right? It actually looks like any hotel room anywhere, almost anywhere in the world, but it's actually in Atlanta. We're here for a conference and uh, so glad to be joining you here today as we, uh, once again, wherever we're at, wherever we're at, whatever day it is, we start the same way, taking our first steps with God. So uh, we are in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 3 today, and it is the account of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and the fiery furnace. So this chapter, chapter 3, starts off where Nebuchadnezzar has a crazy idea. Now, I, I don't know how related this is to the previous chapter. We has the dream of the statue, a uh, giant statue with a head of gold and uh, all the different metals. Uh, but Nebuchadnezzar comes up with the idea to create a giant golden statue of himself. And his idea is that everyone in the whole country is going to bow down and worship him. That's going to be his uh, the, the celebration. So... There's the word is spread, the, the statue's built, and when the music plays, everyone bows down. Except, except Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And there are some snitches in Babylon. There's some people that, uh, that don't like the favor that they've been given. They don't like that they're moving up the ranks. So, of course, they're immediately going to tell King Nebuchadnezzar that these three young men are not bowing down. They're not worshiping. They're brought before Nebuchadnezzar, and he has built a giant fiery furnace uh, j for just this occasion. And in fact, that was a threat. He said, if you don't bow down, you're getting, you're getting burned alive. Once again, it was a little insight into Nebuchadnezzar. This is the type of man that he is. Yet, these young men, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, are all serving him, are all <laughs> doing their best uh, in a culture that's completely opposite to God. So, let's get back to them. Pulls him in front of him, says, you need to bow down or I'm going to throw you in that fire first. And, and this, the response of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is so amazing. It's so amazing. And that's what I want to focus on here today. It says this, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Abednego replied, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the golden statue you have set up. Now, what an amazing declaration of faith. That they are very confident that this, this isn't a thing for our God. You throw us in a fiery furnace, not overly, uh, overly concerned about this. Our God can save us from a fiery furnace. But here's where the big faith step of faith. But, but even if he doesn't, we're still not doing it. But regardless of whether God comes through for us in this moment, right here and right now, it's not going to affect our, our obedience. It's not going to affect our desire to, to honor him. The God has been, they don't say all of this, but God has been more than faithful enough in our lives that he doesn't have to show up at this moment to prove that he is real. They're confident that regardless of the outcome, God, they're going to honor God with their with their life. What an amazing testimony. You know, how often we get caught up in the, and this is not a, a, a knock, this is not a negative thing, but when we're in trouble, when there are things going poorly, when we get the diagnosis, when things seem dire, like, God, if you get me out of this situation, I promise I will fill in the blank, right? I promise I'll go back to church. I promise I'll start reading my Bible every day. I, I promise I'll start giving. I promise I'll fill in the blank, what, maybe it's kick a bad habit or, or whatever. But when we look at this passage here, it's not a conditional agreement with God. And so we believe God can rescue us here. But even if he doesn't, it's not going to affect our faith in him. That we're going to honor him regardless of what we see God doing in these individual circumstances. John the Baptist had a conversation with, uh, with Jesus, well, through his disciples. He was in prison. He had been thrown into prison after calling out Herod, and he sent a message to Jesus. He's like, Jesus, are, are you really the Messiah? Are you really the Messiah? Now, why would John be asking that? I mean, he had told everyone he was the Messiah. He had been proclaimed, so his whole life was based on pointing to Jesus. But why was John doubting? He was doubting because of his circumstances. He was in prison. This wasn't how he expected things to go. 
And he sent the message to Jesus, are you, are you the Messiah? And Jesus sent the word back and said, of course, I, I am. He says, the blind see, the lame walk. Those who, I'm the one you pointed to. And then he said this, God blesses those who do not fall away on account of me. And what he's saying to John is, even though I'm not coming through for you on this certain circumstance, don't let it affect your faith. Don't let what's happening right here in this one moment affect an entire track record of your faith journey with God. That's the type of faith that, that John ended up, ha he had. He just needed that encouragement in that moment. This is the type of faith that, that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had. Their faith wasn't best on, based on whether God was going to get them out of this jam. Their faith in God was, was solid, and whatever God chose to do, they were going to be faithful. Well, they get thrown in the furnace. In fact, it's so hot that even the men who throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the furnace are killed. But then after a while, they look into the furnace, and it's not just three men in there, there's a fourth. And we see God show up in the fiery furnace with them. He is in the fire with them, protecting them, keeping them safe. Nebuchadnezzar calls for them to come back out and makes a decree. He says, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is real. And no one, no one in my kingdom is ever allowed to say anything negative against this God again. <laughs> it's in a full dependence. And the Nebuchadnezzar doesn't completely turn his life around. He doesn't say this is the only God. He says, you know, you can't talk bad about this God, but, but it's a step. It's a step. Little by little, interaction by interaction, Nebuchadnezzar is seen. Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego and their faithfulness and God's work in their life and miracles taking place. And we're going to see what happens in his life later on. Today, the big idea, though, is even in these difficult situations, whether God gets us out or not, are we going to be faithful? Is our faith best based on our, certain, our, our current cir circumstances? Is our faith best based in God's character? That's the key. When we base it in God's character, we're going to have ups and we're going to have downs. But God is always faithful. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for today. We thank you that we get to start our day with you. We thank you that we get to continue our day with you. And we thank you that we get to end our day with you. And even though our day might be full of ups and downs, we know that it's not because you're, you're walking away from us and coming back. You are present with us always. And God, may we just continue to, to walk in faith. God, may we, not, may we not blame you when things go bad, and may we not take credit when things are going good. We just start our day praising you today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. And I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.